Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. Barbados' opposition leader, Bishop Joseph Anthony, has been forced into a position of defense. This story takes the lead in today's edition of Caribbean Perspective for Friday, 7th January 2022. Details when we return. Conveniently located in the Grand Anne Shopping Center, for over 40 years, Food Fair has provided quality service at affordable prices. Now, grocery shopping is made easier and more convenient from the Food Fair web store. Hey, babe. Hmm? Listen now, I need you to go down to food fair to get some groceries. All right, no problem. Right away. Thanks, babe. What are you doing? You're supposed to be going food fair to get a grocery, man. I am. But didn't you know you can order your groceries online from the food fair web store? Are you serious? Of course. All you have to do is just log on to www.foodfair.gd with credit card in hand. And with an order of $100 or more, food fair granites will deliver up to three miles away. And you don't even have to worry about your information, you know. The safety measures are excellent. So hold on. You just order online and Food Fair will deliver to you? Yep. Oh, baby, better hurry up and order, man. <laughs> I already did. They should be here any minute now. Enjoy easy online shopping anytime from your home or office from the Food Fair web store. Food Fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets. Welcome back. Bishop Joseph Arthady, the man who crossed the floor in the Parliament of Barbados in the early aftermath of the Mia Motley's 30 to 0 win in the 2018 general elections, has dismissed suggestions by Prime Minister Mia Motley that he has switched constituencies to undermine the current representative. More in this Barbados Today news item. Bishop Adderley, who is the leader of the Alliance Party for Progress, on Monday revealed that he would not be seeking re-election for the St. Michael West seat, which he won in the 2018 poll on the Barbados Labour Party ticket. Instead, he would be vying for the St. Michael Central seat held by BLP representative Arthur Holder. He, however, made it clear that he had no vendetta against Holder. I'm not here having anything to do with Arthur Holder. I'm here for the same reason I moved across the aisle in the parliament. I'm here for the same reasons I went to St. Michael West. I'm here in the interest of Barbadians. In this instance, specifically so, more immediately so, the people of Waterford, Dean's Village, and Bank Hall, and Station Hill, Water Hall land. All over Bank Hall, big districts, all over Waterford, big districts, all over Bushall, big district, Station Hill and Dean's Village, all of these areas, Water Hall land. I'm here to represent their interests. It has nothing to do with anything against Arthur Holder. He's never done anything of which I am aware. I hope he doesn't uh, change that situation during the course of, of this election. I don't like that kind of politics. Um, I'm here just to offer myself. People can judge me. I have been serving this constituency for 40 years now, through the church mainly, but in other ways as well. Grew up with people around here, played with them. And even while representing St. Michael West, I was representing the interests of people up here. You know, there are things you can say to get personal. I don't like to get done with that. That's not my style of politics. And Miss Motley can accuse me of taking an unchristian step. If she knows what it is to be unchristian, well, then um, perhaps we should understand that. But I am not going to get into that type of, of politics. I came here out of a genuine interest. Once my stint at St. Michael West ended, when the parliament was dissolved a couple of weeks ago, then I was free to say to the people of St. Michael Central, who asked me, and these guys can tell you, come up here and run. And, and here I am. And I will give my best to them, win, lose, or draw. One of the unions representing Liat former workers makes an impassioned plea for Barbados to summon an emergency meeting with other shareholder governments to conclude a severance pay package for all terminated employees. Emmanuel Joseph of Barbados Today has that story. Thompson acknowledged that general elections slated for January the 19th in Barbados will now further delay any chances of talks being held to conclude a plan to pay the struggling ex Liat employees their legal entitlements. But we are still struggling. The, the, all the Liat workers are 21 months into having no severance at all, no end in sight to the plight. And it's a very difficult time to live. We are struggling. We have no money to retool. We have no money to pay bills. 
there is no job on the horizon for us. So we are three times over worse than most people. Thompson said the offer of a compassionate payment of half of the severance made by the Antigua government and the advance of $2,000 per month by the Barbados government to its nationals have not gone far enough to satisfy the dire financial problems of the workers. The two in initiatives from the Barbados government and Antigua government do not deal with it conclusively. They do not hand deal with the situation long term. And we need help. Not only do we need help, we also would like to know what about the future of aviation in the Caribbean? What about, uh, they see other airlines operating within Barbados airspace now, within Barbados, home port in Barbados. That's fantastic. It's good for them. But what about the Barbadians and the other CARICOM nationals who lived in Barbados, who worked for them? What about their future? Has there anything been discussed with other airlines to try and absorb the, some of us into that workforce? Can that happen? I understand they would have their people, but obviously everything is in negotiation. Hundreds of former Liat employees are owed about 80 million EC dollars, that's 30 million US dollars in severance payments. Emmanuel Joseph for Barbados Today. A high number of healthcare workers are reported to have been exposed amid record cases of COVID-19 in the Bahamas. This Eyewitness News report has some details. Severe manpower challenges being experienced at healthcare facilities here in New Providence and Grand Bahama as what is believed to be the highly transmissible Omicron variant accounting for record-breaking case numbers in the past few days, leaving healthcare workers exposed. In New Providence, there's a little over 100 healthcare professionals out in New Providence and uh, there is about 30 uh, to my last count in uh, Grand Bahama Duran Memorial Hospital. Minister of Health and Wellness Dr. Michael Darwell revealing today that amidst a relentless fourth wave, the shortage of staff having a rippling effect at the Princess Margaret Hospital with some services having to be suspended. Some of our staff is out as a result of exposure to COVID, whether it's isolation or quarantine, but we are able to provide the essential services. At our legacy unit, uh, we have uh, admissions and we're opening up more of the tents, but I must admit that due to the exposure of some of our staff members, some of the essential services had to be cut back. And even though we have sufficient bed space, we are now restructuring to ensure that we find the staff where individuals who will be admitted will be able to go in those particular wards. To shore up the sector, Dr. Darvill says the health ministry is securing additional healthcare workers as a part of its COVID strategy. We outlined our plan. One of the plans was to bring additional doctors into the hospital system, that is being done as we speak. The other plan was to increase the amount of nurses in the system because of the exposure and the effectivity of the COVID-19. A lot of nurses can go in possible quarantine or isolation. And so we are now seeking to bring in an additional 50 nurses from abroad to assist us in our fight against COVID. <music> You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. Carnival Cruise Line returns to Antigua and Barbuda. Rakib Aparicio reports from ABS News. Carnival Cruises back in 2019 announced its intentions to pull its four calls to port for the 2019-2020 winter season. News of this came shortly after the Antigua and Barbuda government announced plans for a 30-year lease agreement for the island's main seaports, which came into effect later that year. The government, following the pullout, entered into a series of discussions with Carnival Cruises. Those discussions have borne fruit with the arrival of Carnival Freedom on Tuesday. Antigua Barbuda Tourism Authority Chief Executive Officer Colin James says this is the first Carnival cruise vessel to arrive in Antigua since 2018. Antigua Barbuda has a good product. We have excellent process in the GS. Um and, and so um, even as we have um, commissioned that fifth berth and we have lobbied hard with all our cruise line partners for renewed calls, and, and this is just a testimony to that, there's strong confidence in the destination. Antigua and Barbuda is anticipating over 400,000 cruise passengers throughout the year. But the recovery of the sector and return of kind of a cruise lines come at an uncertain time for the industry. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention advises against cruise travel, regardless of vaccination status. 
the cruise industry seems to be um, dealt, being dealt with a little bit harsher than any other mode of transportation because, I mean, you know, the same tests and protocols that you have to have to board a cruise vessel is the same that you have to get on an airline. It is, I know, a cause of concern for the entire cruise industry, but we continue um, to work with the regulations that are in place. As of Tuesday, Antigua and Barbuda is included in all four of the line's Caribbean cruises. Three of the four excursions are scheduled for January of this year. Rakib Abaris reporting for ABS News. A mix of the flu and COVID-19 is being dubbed Florona and has been first detected in Israel. Given that we are in the flu season, there is usually confusion about the different shades of the two viruses. Uh, Dr. Warren Mullen, consultant ENT surgeon at the Kingston Hospital, joins TVG News to explain. What is the likelihood so, of someone getting flu and COVID-19 at the same time? And should we be worried here in Jamaica? It's always a risk, particularly in the older population and the immunocompromised, and particularly in the unvaccinated, that there's always a risk that you could have both infections at the very same time. They're both contagious respiratory illnesses. And, and so, yes, it's a issue of concern. Okay, given that the symptoms are similar, uh, what, is, what are the first things that someone should do if they have any of these symptoms? Well, one of the first things to do is, if you think you may either have COVID-19, um, particularly, and the flu, is, is to isolate and do all the protocols that have been promulgated, including washing your hands, source control, which is wearing a mask, um, and physical distancing, and, and those principles are true for both viruses. And, and get, getting tested is, is crucial because there are crucial differences between the viruses. So certainly COVID-19 is more contagious than the flu. Um, it's also more likely to cause um, serious illness in, in some individuals. Um, the period in time in which you are infective is, is longer in COVID-19 versus the flu. And the symptoms of post-infection, such as uh, long COVID symptoms, are more are an issue that you don't face as much with the flu. All right, you mentioned testing a while ago. Are you saying that we should ramp up our testing for COVID-19 now? Absolutely. I, I, I am a big advocate for more testing and more, certainly more access to testing and, and reducing the cost of testing because you, you really would like to know um, because the risk of severe illness is, is, is there, even in healthy individuals. And, and so testing is important so that you can mitigate the risk and certainly uh, reduce the risk to the general population, which is largely unvaccinated in Jamaica, unfortunately. Well, that is somewhat of a cause for concern because uh, there's already challenge in terms of the cost for testing and the number of persons. are so pretty much a bottleneck in terms of persons trying to get tested for traveling and other reasons. What do you suggest can be done to make testing more affordable and available to, to Jamaicans? Uh, we've seen in recent times where there's been a reduction in the cost and testing once there is more access to testing and once more places are offered to testing. And certainly getting testing um, in home kits, uh, getting more testing within uh, doctor's offices, uh, basically improving access at all points that people will um, access healthcare is important to reduce costs and improve access so that uh, we can all know and, and act from an informed position. Conveniently located in the Grand Anne Shopping Center, for over 40 years, Food Fair has provided quality service at affordable prices. Now, grocery shopping is made easier and more convenient from the Food Fair web store. Hey, babe. Hmm? Listen, uh, I need you to go down to food fair to get some groceries. All right, no problem. Right away. Thanks, babe. What are you doing? You're supposed to be going food fair to get a grocery, man. I am. But didn't you know you can order your groceries online from the food fair web store? Are you serious? Of course. All you have to do is just log on to www.foodfair.gd with credit card in hand. And with an order of $100 or more, food fair granites will deliver up to three miles away. And you don't even have to worry about your information, you know. Their safety measures are excellent. So hold on. You just order online and Food Fair will deliver to you? Yep. Oh, baby, better hurry up and order, man. <laughs> I already did. They should be here any minute now. Enjoy easy online shopping anytime from your home or office from the Food Fair web store. Food Fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets.
I am Eddie Frederick, wishing you a restful weekend. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more.